The law firm of Villasis and Partners, VP Law, is a law office engaged in the general practice of law. Its principal office is conveniently located at the heart of the University Belt at Villasis Law Center, VLC, Unit 911 CKKFI Building P. Parade Street, Sampala, Manila. VP Law was organized in 2015 by attorney Christian G. Villasis and continues to expand to date. From the start, VP Law has maintained a varied and prestigious client base and continues to be recognized as one of the leading law firms in the country. VP Law has a diversified general law practice as the firm handles all aspects of corporate, commercial and business transactions, protection and enforcement of intellectual property rights and data privacy rights, collection, civil and criminal litigation, admiralty and maritime practice, labor management relations, election, administrative and local government cases, real estate transactions, land titles, deeds and conveyances, foreclosure of mortgages, writ of possession, replevin, bought laws, business organizations and corporate regulatory compliance and taxation, among others. In addition, the firm offers contract drafting, review, and negotiation, legal research and consultation, as well as other legal assistance appurtenant thereto. At present, the firm's increasing number of lawyers is capable of handling various legal matters and cases and is able and willing to cater to clients' concerns with utmost professionalism and zeal. Apart from experienced VP law lawyers, its legal team includes highly competent paralegals and professional legal staff who are constantly inclined to assist the lawyers, thereby ensuring efficient and cost-effective service to its clients. VP Law aims to provide its clients with quality legal representation anchored on the ethics of hard work, commitment and responsiveness to clients' needs. This vision has been the moving force in the firm's growth into a first-rate, full-service law firm.
our VLC. We offer value, providing you with quality review programs and online seminars that bring out the best in you. At VLC, we listen. Adapting to the times, we brought our in-demand on-ground review lectures online with our virtual law companion. Subscribing to this online learning platform means you get 24-7 access to our updated video lectures and bar review notes from the best and most respected lecturers and professors. At VLC, we collaborate, working with the best technology providers through our learning management system to best prepare you for the first ever digitalized bar exams. We work hand-in-hand -hand with legal experts you can trust, providing top-notch services to those who need it the most through our free online legal consultations and free lecture series. Value, listen, and collaborate. This is the VLC way. And we are VLC.
Jola Gulus Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court devised or laid down tests in determining whether a counterclaim is compulsory or permissive. There are four questions to be asked, my friends. The first question is, you check, okay? Sabi ko, compulsory or claim arises out or it is necessarily connected with transaction occurrence which is the subject matter of the complaint. Pag sinabi mong compulsory counterclaim, kaibigan, it is, it is an offshoot of the complaint. There is a logical connection between the counterclaim and the subject matter of the complaint. Kaya sa bar exam, tinan nyo ang apat na test na ito. Number one, are the issues of fact or law raised? The next one is with respect to estate. Alright? Gifts. Alright? Bequest, devices. If you try to analyze it, these are actually the transfer taxes being pertained to in the National Internal Revenue Code. They are the estate for inheritance or succession and then the donor's tax for gifts. Right? So one is uh, mortis causa, that's the estate tax, and the other one is inter vivos. The other one is inter vivos. Now, uh, Incidentally, uh, I just got reminded that, uh, well, you learned in uh, the general principles of taxation that uh, the main purpose of taxation is actually to raise revenue. But in the case of donor stocks, it's not actually the main purpose, although it's still one of the purposes of donor stocks. But primarily, donor stocks is actually, alright, the and. Uh, What is a dispute? The dispute is a disagreement on a point of law or fact, a conflict of legal views or interests between two persons, natural or juridical. In the Republic Act 9285 or the ADR Act of 2004, it is defined as a process or procedure used to resolve a dispute or controversy other than by adjudication of a presiding judge of a court or an officer of a government agency in which a neutral third party participates to assist in the resolution of issues which includes arbitration, mediation, conciliation, early neutral evaluation, mini trial, or any combination thereof. So we take note of the meaning. It is a process or a procedure. Rule 30 is trial in civil cases, while Rule 119 is trial in criminal cases. Under Rule 119, trial in criminal cases, I give emphasis to the following issues. The first is the continuous trial, which I already partly discussed with you. Uh, just refer yourselves to the continuous trial rule in criminal cases, the latest on uh, the issue. Then the second issue that I would like to discuss in Rule 119 would be the mode of discovery, which uh, should be discussed in relation to Rule 23. Answer either way, class, and, and so long as you are able to present in your answer basic precepts, sound ones, and rational ones, then it should be your answer given full credit. Uh, it would all depend on, as I always announce in my class, and no? it would always depend on your English. All right, you say 
that the successful president can act on those bills. Why? Well, because the Constitution does not make any distinction as to the rule of presentment and the competence of either predecessor or successor president to approve or veto the same. The only uh, prescription in the Constitution is that if it were not acted within 30 days, then it shall be considered essentially as having lapsed into law. But you can answer that way, class, and that should be a correct answer. But then you can answer the other way. Again, sequential, you may skip, but make sure no, that you are still on that track. And uh, what best way for you to make sure that you are still on track is again to devote a page to a main question. Make sure, make sure that you uh, you do this so that you wouldn't be you wouldn't be forced to resort not to to putting notes like how you do it in law school because in the bar examinations no more. Diba yung notes mo dun sa examiner, Mr. Bar examiner, please check the last page of my book, uh, of my booklet because that's where I put my answer in this, to this question. That's not allowed anymore because that's an un unnecessary marking, right? So, kung sa law school, nagagawa yung dati, puro anos, you try to direct your professor and went there to this. Party Gress's case and real evidence consists of objects offered in court. Example, you may use a physical object to demonstrate its existence or identity. Like for example, the serial number on a computer found in a private residence could identify it as a government-owned property. Or for example, the gun that was used in case of murder. Now, the other type would be testimonial evidence. And what is testimonial evidence? You call a person to take the witness stand and his testimony is offered to prove, is being offered to prove uh, specific purposes. The third type will be your documentary evidence. It is formally offered by the proponent immediately before he rests his case. A document may be an object of evidence or a documentary evidence depending on the person. This is before the amendment. And for every allegation, it should be supported by evidence because evidence is the means sanctioned by the rules in a judicial proceeding to establish what? That equals to the truth. So if there is an allegation supported by evidence, then you're able to establish to the truth. But now it has been adjusted. Kind, kindly take note of that. Why? Because today, for purposes of filing a pleading, for purposes of initiating a complaint, and this would include all other pleadings, even responsive pleadings, what is now the requirement to do under Rule 6? That together with a pleading initiatory pleading, which is made as an integral part thereof, would be what? Judicial agreements.
our VLC. We offer value, providing you with quality review programs and online seminars that bring out the best in you. At VLC, we listen. Adapting to the times, we brought our in-demand on-ground review lectures online with our virtual law companion. Subscribing to this online learning platform means you get 24-7 access to our updated video lectures and bar review notes from the best and most respected lecturers and professors. At VLC, we collaborate, working with the best technology providers through our learning management system to best prepare you for the first ever digitalized bar exams. We work hand-in-hand -hand with legal experts you can trust, providing top-notch services to those who need it the most through our free online legal consultations and free lecture series. Value, listen, and collaborate. This is the VLC way. And we are VLC. Good day to our dear attendees from different parts of the country. I pray that you're all in a great state of health. This free webinar is streaming live via the Villalis Law Center's YouTube channel and Facebook page. If you can hear my voice clearly, please type in the comment section, hashtag VLC. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Optimize this learning opportunity. Share this free online lecture to your friends and together learn at the comfort of your homes. I want to formally welcome you all to this free webinar. This is part of a series of free online lectures brought to you by the virtual law companion of Villatis Law Center. Allow me to share to you this good news. The virtual law companion is the newest innovation of Villages Law Center, which aims to provide an easy, convenient, and quality bar review experience. The Virtual Law Companion is a web application that is hosted on a dedicated cloud server. It can be accessed via the internet 24-7 for any web browser using any device or handheld computers like Android or iOS phones. Meaning, you can study anytime, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Please visit our website at www.piliasislawcenter.com to know more about our programs and activities. Before we formally start, please take note of some reminders. First, this free webinar is pre-recorded to ensure the uninterrupted streaming of lectures. Secondly, VLC team will be with you to assist you should you need more information about our program. Please visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Without further ado, Please give your virtual class and welcome our lecturer today. Again, this free webinar is brought to you by our virtual law companion. Maraming salamat po. Together, we can make things happen. Together, we can. Our lecturer is a court attorney at the Supreme Court of the Philippines, Office of the Reporter, in charge of syllabus and subject index of the recent decisions promulgated by the Supreme Court that will be published in the Philippine Reports. He is also a professor at Manuel L. Quezon University School of Law for almost seven years teaching legal ethics, problem areas in legal ethics, legal profession, and sales. And annually conducts pre-week bar lecture at the Grand Lodge of the Philippines for Mason's Order of Law Proceedings and at MLQU School of Law. Without further ado, let us all welcome Professor Frederick Anciano.
Good day, everyone. I am Professor Frederick Ayansiano, and welcome to this free online lecture brought to you by the Virtual Law Companion of Bilyasis Law Center. Prepare for the bar examination at any time, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Check out the VLC website at www.bilyasislawcenter.com for more details and particulars. Optimize this learning opportunity. Like the VLC Facebook page and share this FB live session. Host a watch party by FB and tag your friends now and together learn at the comfort of your homes. Before we start, please comment VLC if you can hear me clearly. Okay, uh, today I'll be discussing about legal ethics, more particularly um, the code of professional responsibility okay so before uh we start with the cpr of course let's uh review what is the definition of legal ethics kasi baka mamaya itanong sa bar bar no when you take the bar and hindi natin masagot kung ano lang yung definition ng legal ethics diba? so legal ethics when we uh, when we define legal ethics tat tatlong linya lang ang tatandaan natin okay so first it is a branch it is a branch of moral science number 2 which deals with the duties which a lawyer owes to the yung pangatlong tatandaan natin yung fourfold duties ng lawyer duty of the lawyer to the public or society duty of the lawyer to the bar or legal profession duty of the lawyer to the courts and duty of the lawyer to his or her clients. Okay, again, what is legal ethics? It is a branch of moral science which deals with the duties of a lawyer that he owes to the public or society, to the bar or legal profession, to the courts, and to the clients. Now, CPR is, is composed of these fourfold duties. Okay? Bakit? Kasi ang uh, duty of the lawyer to the society is canon 1 to 6. Okay? Ang duty ng lawyer sa bar or legal profession is canon 7 to 9. And then ang duty ng, court, uh, ng uh, lawyer sa courts is canon 10 to 13. And then, duty of the lawyer to the clients is canon 14 to 22. Okay? Now, this is basically is the Code of Professional Responsibility. CPR, Code of Professional Responsibility. By, but mind you, CPR is different from the Code of Judicial Conduct. Kasi yung Code of Judicial Conduct applies to judges. CPR applies to lawyers, whether uh, private practitioner, whether sa government. Okay? Now, we will not be discussing each and every rules sa CPR. Okay? Kasi yung taramihan naman dyan, self-explanatory. Uh, we will be using the system of probability method. Ibig ko sabihin kung ano yung mga topic lang na sources ng bar question uh, for the past 5 years or 10 years, yun lang yung mga topic na i-discuss natin. Okay? So let's start first with the duty of the lawyer to the society. When we, uh, which is canon 1 to 6. When we talk about duty of the lawyer to the society, syempre unang-una dyan, wag na wag nyo kakalimutan lalo na pag nag-bar kayo. Kasi if talagang for emergency purposes at wala kayong masagot, memorize this 1.01. Okay? 1.01, the catch-all uh, rule sa CPR. At ang uh, technique natin dyan, syempre don't forget the word you did. Kasi sabi sa 1.01, you did. A lawyer shall not engage in unlawful, dishonest, immoral, and deceitful conduct. Okay, so that's the catch-all rule. A lawyer shall not engage in unlawful, dishonest, immoral, and deceitful conduct. Now, um, let's go to the first important topic, kung ano yung mga bar, sor uh, bar question na uh, mga usual na tinatanong. Laging tinatanong dyan, like uh, last uh, bar, uh, bar exam, yung about sa purely personal activity ng lawyer as a defense. 
way yung kanya mga private matters. So first topic natin is about uh, private activities of a lawyer as a defense. Anong ibig sabihin po nito? Ah, uh, meron tanong dati sa bar, ito si attorney. Uh, dahil uh, kaibigan niya yung banko, kilala siya, binigyan siya ng uh, credit card. Uh, to cut the long story short, lumaki ng lumaki yung utang niya sa credit card. Okay, hindi siya nakapagbayad. And then, pinailan ngayon si attorney ng disbarment uh, for non-payment of uh, debt or loan. Ngayon, ano ngayon ang depensa ni attorney? Sabi niya, Supreme Court dismissed the case kasi it is a private matter. It is a purely personal activity which has nothing to do with the legal profession. So yun, may, meron na naman tanong sa bar dati. Uh, it's about a lawyer, nagre-rent siya. Okay? So, in short, hindi siya nakapagbayad ng upa. Pinailan siya na ng disbarment ng lesor. Okay? Siyempre, ano na naman ang depensa ni lawyer? Sabi ni lawyer, this is a private matter. This is a purely personal activity which has nothing to do with my legal profession. So, it should be dismissed. Okay? So, can a lawyer be, dis, uh, be disbarred or suspended because of a uh, private, because of because of a purely private activities. Pwede siyang ma-disbar. Ang ating legal basis ay yung 1.01 which is a lawyer should not engage, ay, a lawyer should not engage in you did or unlawful, dishonest, immoral, and deceitful conduct. But, ang pinakapasok talaga dyan although nasa duty sa legal, uh, duty to the legal profession siya is yung 7.03. So, magkaduktong, magka, ano sila, magkasama pag kasama silang legal basis. Pag ang tanong sa bar is about such defense nga ni lawyer na it's about his or her private activity, pwede pa rin siyang ma-disbar. Meron pa rin violation ng CPR. Kasi ang sinasabi rin sa 7.03 is that a lawyer shall not engage in conduct that adversely reflect his fitness to practice law nor he or she whether in public or private life behave in a scandalous manner to discredit the legal profession. Okay? So, yun po yung sa pang-legal basis natin. Again, bukod sa 1.01 which is you did, pati 7.03. Again, which provides that a lawyer shall not engage in conduct that adversely reflect his fitness to practice law nor he or she whether in public or private life behave in a scandalous manner to discredit the legal profession. Okay, so uh, number two, important topic under uh, duty to the society. Of course, we all know what is Bara 3, Bara 3, and ambulance chasing. Okay, so Bara 3 basically means uh, the lawyer is steering a quarrel. Okay, ambulance chasing, basically it means that a lawyer is chasing an ambulance and that ambulance is carrying a victim of an accident. Okay, so sinusundan ni lawyer yung ambulansya na may biktima because of an accident. And this is uh, what is being prohibited. Ano ba yung purpose ni attorney? His purpose is to offer his legal services to the victim in order for the victim to file a case against the party who caused the injury. Okay, so that's ambulance chasing. So, Basically, ang difference sila sa Bara 3, kumbaga uh, wala pang cause of action. Kumbaga, nang-uudyok pa lang si lawyer, si attorney. Pero dito sa ambulance chasing, meron na tayong kumbaga cause of action. Okay? But, is it allowed or is it prohibited? Of course, we all know these are prohibited acts. But what is our legal basis? Why are we saying that Bara 3 or ambulance chasing is prohibited? Why is it prohibited under the CPR? Because according to the CPR, the CPR provides that, uh, a, law, uh, that uh, a lawyer shall not for any corrupt motive or interest encourage any suit or proceeding or delay any man's cause. Okay, again, uh, sabi sa CPR natin, a lawyer shall not for any corrupt motive or interest encourage any suit or proceedings or delay any man's cause. Kaya, Bawal po ang Bara 3 and Ambulance Chasing. Okay?
Number three, uh, third uh, important topic is about solicitation of legal business. So what is uh, solicitation of legal business? Basically, uh, layman, uh, yung mga iba sa inyo nakatira dun sa mga lugar, sa mga barangay na pag may uh, basketball, may paliga yung barangay, mayroong mga kumakatok sa bahay na mga kabataan at sabihin, Sir, ma'am, solicit lang po. So basically, parang ganun din yung solicitation of legal business. Si attorney ang lumalapit sa kliyente or si attorney ang parang businessman or parang merchant. Now, as a general rule, solicitation of legal business is prohibited. Okay? This is uh, prohibited. Uh, because according to the CPR, uh, sabi ng CPR natin with regards to uh, solicitation of legal business, a lawyer shall not do or permit to be done any act designed primarily to solicit legal business. Okay? So again, sabi ng CPR natin, sabi ng CPR natin, a lawyer shall not do or permit to be done any act designed primarily to solicit legal business. And in a long line of cases, pag uh, umakit sa Supreme Court ng kaso about um, disbarment uh, against a lawyer, uh, ang cause of action na is solicitation of legal business, sinasabi ng Supreme Court is it is highly unethical for a lawyer to advertise his skill like a merchant. Why? Ito yung gustong gusto kong sasabihin mo sa bar. Kailangan huwag mawawala. Why? Because lawyering is a noble profession. It is not a trade or a business. Okay? So, if there's a question sa inyong bar exam sa legal ethics about solicitation of legal business, don't forget yung uh, phrase na yun. Again, it is highly unethical for a lawyer to advertise his skill like a merchant. Why? Because lawyering is a noble profession. It is not a trade or a business. Okay? So, kung uh, bawal ang solicitation of legal business, paano mapapaalam ni attorney na meron siyang law firm na ganito, na uh, his, uh, meron siyang legal services offered, pwede naman siya provided or to be considered as permissible solicitation of legal business. Basic rules, una-una, kailangan it should not be self-ludatory. Okay? It should be simple and it should not be self-praising. And uh, like yung many times sa tinanong sa bar, paano kung halimbawa nilagay dun sa sa advertisement ni lawyer sa kanyang law office na nakalagay. Let's say for example, attorney Palmero specialized in annulment and legal separation cases. Okay? Tapos may nakalagay pa sa baba, free legal consultation. Is that allowed? No, it is uh, considered as uh, solicitation of legal business which is not permissible. Why? Kasi da wag dapat ilalagay ng abogado sa kanyang mga tarpaulin or uh, advertisement na he specialized on a specific law or specific field of law. Kasi every, every lawyer naman, lahat naman yan specialized pagdating sa law. Okay? It should not be self-ludatory. It should not be self uh, self-praising. It should not be misleading. Okay? And also, do not put the word free. Free legal consultation. Okay? Kasi para ang uh, merchant, para businessman si attorney. But in one uh, bar question, may nakalagay doon, free legal consultation. Pero according to uh, sa suggested answer, it is valid. Why is it valid? Because in that case, in that bar question, ang nakalagay, yung free legal service is was re requested by the IDP. Okay? So, you cannot decline to render free legal services if it is requested by the IDP. Pero kung wala naman request ng IDP, uh, para lang sa ano mo, sa law firm mo, para lang dun sa ilalagay sa tarpaulin mo, free legal consultation or sa newspaper, that is prohibited. Okay? So, again, solicitation of legal business, uh, ang ating legal basis under our uh, under our CPR is a lawyer shall not shall not do or permit to be done any act designed primarily to solicit legal business. And it is highly unethical for a lawyer to advertise his skill 
like a merchant because lawyering is a noble profession that is not a trade or a business okay so uh, i hope uh, you're maximizing this uh, learning session uh, please tag a friend to this fb live or host uh, watch party okay so my fourth important topic or significant uh, topic under the cpr is about the sub first uh, hypothetical question yung lagi kong tinatanong sa sa klase let's say for example you just recently passed the bar exam okay so bagong pasa ka lang it so happen na meron kang kabarkada na celebrity na artista na sobrang sikat na may asawa rin siya na artista na sobrang sikat na pag tinanong ko sa klase ko for 7 years pag tinanong ko sinong celebrity ko po lang gusto niyong mag anal maghiwalay Lahat sila pare-pareho pero hindi ko na sabihin kung sino pangalan, okay? So, kaibigan mo halimbawa si Celebrity Girl, lumapit sa sayo, sabi sa inyo, "Attorney, kasi magpo-file ako ng annulment, gusto ko na mapagwalay sa asawa ko." Na artista rin na si Kat, okay? So, syempre ikaw, bagong pasa ka sa bar, syempre gusto mo makuha yung kaso. So, ginawa mo muna, tinanong mo siya, "O, oh, Celebrity Girl Beshi, um, meron ka na bang mga napagtanungan na ibang abogado?" Sabi naman ni Celebrity Girl, Beshi, uh, meron si Attorney A. Sabi niya, acceptance fee niya is 500,000. Tapos si Attorney B, tinanong ko rin, ang sabi niya, acceptance fee niya, mga 450,000. Ito naman si Attorney C, mga nasa 550. So kayo, syempre, bilang gusto niyo makuha yung kaso because it will be a sensational case, sabi mo, uh, best, 10,000. Ako kahawak ng kaso mo, 10,000 na acceptance fee. Okay. Walang tayuan. Pumirma ngayon si Beshi. Okay, pumirma ka rin. Contract of for legal services. Question, was there any violation committed under the CPR? Yes, there is. That is what you call the principle of cut throat competition. Cutthroat competition. This is prohibited expressly under the CPR. Why? Because the CPR provides that a lawyer shall not charge rates lower than those customarily prescribed. Okay? Of course, there are exceptions, but it is case-to-case -case basis. But generally, hindi pwede magbaba ng uh, legal fees si attorney just because he wanted to have that case. It will be considered as cutthroat competition which is being prohibited because sabi nga ng CPR natin a lawyer shall not charge rates lower than those customarily prescribed and of course IBP every IBP chapter meron silang mga prescribed uh, legal fees so as much as possible maglalayo doon para hindi makonsidered na cutthroat okay? so another topic remember nandito, nandito pa rin tayo sa duty of the lawyer to the society ha? canon 1 to 6 uh, number five. Next topic is um, what is uh, the duty of a uh, lawyer partner? Ibig sabihin si lawyer, uh, member siya ng law firm. What is the duty of a lawyer partner if he accepts public office? He, uh, appointed man or elected. Meron ba duty ang isang abogado na uh, mem uh, member ng law firm pag nag naging public official na siya? Okay. So, under the CPR, yes. So, yung mga abogado dyan na gusto tumakbo, uh, yung mga abogado dyan na maapoy sa government, na merong law firm, you have two duties under the CPR. Okay? So, if a lawyer accepts public office, first, he shall withdraw from the law firm, and number two, his or her name shall be dropped from the law firm's name. Except, this is very important, except if the law allows him to concurrently practice. Okay? Sulat muna natin yung topic kasi baka makalimutan. Uh, lawyer Lawyer partner who accepts public office. Okay? So, si attorney na member ng law firm, if he accepts public office, tandaan po natin ang dalawang duty, he should withdraw from the law firm and his name shall be dropped from the law firm's name. 
Okay? But take note of the exception unless the law allows him to concurrently practice law. So you should know dun sa chapter ng practice of law who are this uh, lawyer, government official who are absolutely prohibited to practice law and those who are restrictive lang. When we say restrictive, bawal, pero pwede pa ganito. Okay? So kasi importante yan dun sa topic natin or sa rule natin about a lawyer who accepts public office. So, i-summarize ko na lang. Okay? So, sa prohibition ng practice of law, meron tayong tinatawag na absolute prohibition at meron din restrictive. Okay? Restrictive. Bakit siya importante again? Kasi pag restrictive siya, pwedeng hindi mag-withdraw sa law firm si lawyer uh, partner. At pwedeng hindi tanggalin yung pangalan niya sa law firm's name. Okay? So, ito na pag absolute ka, pag na, na, uh, nahulo ka dito sa absolute prohibition, you should withdraw from the law firm and your uh, firm name should be dropped. Okay? Sino mga absolute? Of course, we all know the president, vice president, cabinet secretaries, their deputies, sino pa? Si uh, ombudsman, uh, fiscals, okay? And of course, incumbent member of the judiciary, such as judges and uh, justices. But take note of the word incumbent. Kasi pag retired judge or justices, papasok siya sa restrictive lang. Okay? Sa restrictive, tatandaan lang natin tatlo. Unang-una, senators and congressmen. Senators and congressmen. Why? Because generally, se uh, senators and congressmen uh, are allowed to practice law during their incumbency. What is being prohibited lang is they cannot personally appear in court. Okay? They are allowed to give legal advice. Si Senator uh, Congressman, they are allowed to negotiate contracts, to prepare uh, drafts, okay? But they should not sign the pleading. Because pag sinayin nila yung pleading at sinabit niya sa court, constructive appearance in court yan. Okay? So, again, Senator and uh, Congressman. So, si Senator Coco Pimentel, uh, he can still practice lo kahit na in, uh, during his incumbency. Second, are sanggunian members or counselors. Okay? Counselors. Sanggunian members. Can they practice law? Yes. Under the uh, local government code, they are allowed to practice law during their incumbency as a, a counselor. But there are restrictions. Ano yung restriction? Hatiin natin sa tatlo. Tandaan natin si civil case, si criminal case, at si administrative case. Okay? So, si counselor, generally, under the local government code, he can practice law during his incumbency. But, he cannot represent if it is a civil case. Okay? And the uh, adverse party is a government official. Okay? Pag civil case. In so far as to criminal case naman, si counselor, hindi niya pwede tanggapin yung criminal case. If the accused is a government employee and such government employee is was charged of a crime or offense relating to his public position. Yun yung sa criminal case. Pag admin case, hindi pwede tanggapin ni counselor if may bayad. Kailangan uh, no compensation. Okay? In so far as to retired, retired judge or justices, Retired, ha? Kasi pag incumbent ka, papasok ka dito sa absolute. Pag retired judge or just, uh, ju retired justices, if such retired judge or justice is receiving pension under RA 910, okay? Restrictive yung pag-practice na doon niya. Ibig sabihin, he can still practice law, but same dito. Bawal i-represent ni retired judge or ni retired justice. Pag civil case and an adverse party is a government employee, Pag criminal case, hindi pwede i-represent ni retired judge or retired justice. Si accused na government official and he was charged of an offense or crime relating to his position. And if administrative case, hindi pwede pag may compensation. Okay? So, uh, I'm talking about, again, these are public officials who are also lawyers. Can they practice law? So, yan na po. Divide natin sa dalawa. Absolute prohibition. And then restrictive prohibition. Okay. Now let's go back. Let's go back to the CPR proper. Let's balik tayo dito sa topic na a lawyer partner who accepts public office. Again, two duties, 
to withdraw from the law firm and to drop his law firm name. What if, for example, okay, uh, let's say the law firm, this is the law firm, kung hindi nyo mabasa, pakinggan nyo na lang. No, 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 no. The law firm of um, Thor, Taylor, and Fudge. Okay? The law firm of Taylor, Thor, Taylor, and Fudge. So, yun yung law firm nila. So, it so happened since uh, election time, tumakbo as a senator si Thor. Senator. Tumakbo siyang senator. Okay? And then si Taylor, tumakbo siya sa local government nila ng councilor. And then itong si Fudge, gusto niya maging member ng judiciary. So, nag-apply siya as judge. Nag-apply siya as judge. Okay? So, what a coincidence. Nanalo si Thor as senator. So, siya na si Senator Thor. Si Taylor nanalo as counselor. So, siya na si Counselor Taylor. At si Judge, as si Fudge, naging judge na siya. Okay? So, he was appointed as judge. So, siya na ngayon si Judge Fudge. Okay? Now, under the CPR, what are their duties? And should their name still remain in the law firm's name? Let's answer that. First, what are their duties? So, under the CPR, ang sabi ng CPR, when a lawyer accepts public office, the lawyer shall withdraw from the law firm and their uh, name shall be dropped. Unless the law allows them to concurrently practice. So, is a senator allowed to practice law during his or her incumbency? As we have discussed, sa restrictive, pwede. So, hindi siya mag-withdraw sa law firm. What about counselor? Sa restrictive siya kanina, di ba? So, pwede. But what about judge? Hindi pwede. Absolute prohibition. Nandito siya kanina, di ba? Pag judge, absolute prohibition to practice law during their incumbency. So, the duty of fudge is to withdraw from the law firm. And what about their uh, name? Should uh, kailangan ba nandoon pa rin sa law firm na sa law firm name pa rin yung surname nila? As we have discussed, pag restricted, they are allowed to concurrently practice like a senator or a counselor. Pwede i-maintain yung pangalan nila. But a judge absolutely prohibited, he should withdraw from the law firm and his name shall be dropped from the law firm's name. So magiging the law firm na lang ni Thor and Taylor. Okay? And of course, during their incumbency, si Senator Bawal mag personally, uh, personal appearance in court. He can only give legal advice, prepare legal documents, negotiate contracts. Counselor, yes, pwede during incumbency, but take note dun sa uh, civil case, criminal case, and admin case. And wha what about if the cases, for example, kay Bigan nila, ay, kay Bigan nila si... Um, city, le city legal officer nilapitan sila okay sabi ni city legal officer uh, uh, attorney Thor Taylor uh, Fudge can you represent me kasi there's a rape case filed against me sabi nung city legal officer so question pwede ba tanggapin ng law firm nila yung kaso na yun during their incumbency as public official what do you think the case ni City Legal Officer ay rape case. Can they accept it? Yes, they can accept it. Si Senator Thor at si Taylor. Pwede nila i-accept yung kaso kahit kasi why? Because even though it is a criminal case, the offense or the crime is not related to their public position. Okay? Of course, ito si Fudge hindi pwede kasi absolutely prohibited siya. Okay, another, my last uh, important topic under uh, society. This is about um, uh, prosecutors or uh, uh, lawyer engaged in prosecuting. Okay, so let's have an, a hypothetical case. Tinanong sa bar, napakagandang tanong. Uh, here comes a mayor. A mayor was killed. So pinatay si mayor. Tapos, ito ngayon si Pedro Hinule. He was accused of killing the mayor. Okay? So, of course, ang magre-represent dun sa family ni mayor is si prosecutor. 
si Fiscal and of course merong lawyer si accused okay so merong uh, murder case filed against Pedro so during the pendency of the case it so happened na uh, there's a certain let's say for example si Juan lumapit kay prosecutor kay Fiscal sabi ngayon ni Juan uh, Fiscal naawa na kasi ako kay Pedro hindi naman talaga siya yung pumatay ako talaga yung pumatay in fact pwede ako mag-execute ng affidavit pwede mo ako i-present sa court okay so, after that, during the trial, itong si prosecutor, nag-manifest. Nag-manifest sa court, sa judge. Sinabi niya na there's a certain one, si Mr. Si Juan, na sinasabi na siya daw talaga yung pumatay, na nandun siya sa uh, scene of the crime. In short, siya daw talaga yung pumatay. So, after that, nagkaroon ng judgment, Pedro was acquitted. He was acquitted. Ang, ang basis ng court is yung uh, nagkaroon ng, uh, di ba, pag criminal case, kailangan proof beyond reasonable doubt. In this case, nagkaroon ng doubt na guilty si accused. Nagkaroon ng doubt si judge. So, in ngayon si Pedro, basing on the manifestation of the prosecutor. Siyempre, nagalit yung pamilya ni deceased mayor. Sabi ni nung pamilya ni deceased mayor, papay lang kita ng disbarment complaint. Kasi your duty is to prosecute. Your duty is to convict the accused. E bakit dito? Bakit mo pa minanifest na mayroong someone na siya, daw, siya talaga pumatay yan, tuloy na quit. So, basic question, do you think the prosecutor in case in this case will be liable? Of course, no. Because under the CPR, we all know that the primary duty of a lawyer engaged in public prosecution is not to convict but to see to it that justice is done. And this is the most important, uh, suppression of facts or evidences or concealment of any witness that is capable of establishing the innocence of the accused is highly reprehensible and it will cause disciplinary action. So ang ibig sabihin po niyan, kung hindi sinabi or minanifest ni prosecutor na mayroong someone na talagang pumatay, mas lalo siyang ma magiging liable administratively. Mas lalo siya madidisbar kasi nga, it will be a violation of that rule under the CPR. Again, which provides that a law, the primary take note of that, the primary duty of a lawyer engaged in public prosecution is not to convict to convict, but to see to it that justice is done and suppression or concealment of any evidences or facts or concealment of any witness that is capable of establishing the innocence of the accused is highly reprehensible and will cause disciplinary action. So, sixth uh, important topic under the duty of the lawyer to decide is a lawyer engaged in public prosecution. Okay? So these are the important topics. Okay? Uh, so I hope, uh, before we go on, I hope uh, you're enjoying this webinar. Please comment VLC, okay? Please comment VLC. So let's go, let's go now to, before pala, before, before we go now sa legal uh, profession, sa duty of the lawyer to the bar. Uh, I believe kasi parang relationship, we cannot move on if hindi tayo natuto. Okay, so isa-isayin ulit muna natin. Okay, uh, ilagay na rin natin yung rules. Kasi sa first topic natin, yung private activities, of a lawyer, yung mga private matters, can it be a valid defense ng lawyer para hindi sila madisbar or masuspend? No. Because 1.01, a lawyer shall not engage in you did unlawful, dishonest, immoral, deceitful conduct. And the most important, yung pinakapasok na, at, na rule natin dyan is yung 7.03 which provides that a lawyer shall not engage in conduct that adversely reflects his fitness to practice law, nor he or she, whether in public or private life, engage or behave in a scandalous manner to discredit the legal profession. Okay? Para we an ambulance ceasing, that is um, Rule 1.03. Okay? Rule 1.03. At anong sinasabi dyan? A lawyer shall not, for any corrupt motive or interest, encourage any suit. Okay? Solicitation of legal business. 2.03. 2.03. Ano sinasabi dyan sa 
A lawyer shall not do or permit to be done any act designed primarily to solicit legal business. And don't forget yung uh, jurisprudential doctrine wherein a long line of cases pag, uh, related sa solicitation of business. Yung lagi sinasabi ni Supreme Court, ilalagay niyo sa answer niyo sa bar. It is highly unethical for a lawyer to advertise his skill like a merchant because uh, lawyering is a noble profession. It is not a trade or a business. And of course, this cutthroat competition, that is Rule 2.04. This Rule uh, 2.04 provides that a lawyer shall not charge rates lower than those customarily prescribed. Cutthroat competition. A lawyer shall not charge rates lower than those customarily prescribed. 2.04. And then, uh, what is the duty of a lawyer if he accepts public office? Okay? Uh, a lawyer... Uh, Lawyer, partner pala. If a lawyer, partner, if he accepts public office, so meaning to say the lawyer is a member of the law firm, what is his duty if he accepts public office? Sabi ng CPR, he shall be, a lawyer who accepts public office shall withdraw from the law firm and his name shall be dropped from the law firm's name unless the law allows him to concurrently practice. That is uh, Rule 3.03. Rule 3.03. And the last one, if the question in the bar exam is about prosecute uh, about public prosecutors, I think this is uh, this is very relevant. Dapat ilalagay nyo as your legal basis, ilalatang nyo that the primary duty of a lawyer engaged in public prosecution is not to convict but to see to it that justice is done. And suppression of facts or evidences or concealment of any witness that is capable of establishing the innocence of the accused is highly reprehensible and will cause disciplinary action. That is uh, 6.01. Okay? 6.01. So, in so far as the duty of the right to the society, ito po yung para sa akin ay napaka-importante yung mga topic na pag-upo na during your review, unahin nyo muna. Okay? And substantially memorize it kasi ilalatag nyo lang naman uh, whether or not yung responsive answer nyo is yes or no, you should put yung mga legal basis. Okay, okay now, Let's go now to the duty of the lawyer to the legal profession or to the bar. Okay? Okay, what is what are uh, important topics in, uh, in this uh, canon? Number one, important is yung um, language language used by a lawyer in his legal profession. Ano ba dapat? Ano ba dapat ang uh, language na paano ba dapat ang diskarte ng abogado sa pagsasalita sa kanyang legal profession? I mean, say, sa kanyang uh, sa, sa korte, sa kanyang mga kaibigan, sa kapwa niya abogado. Paano ba dapat? Kasi uh, if you become lawyer, kailangan empathic ka lagi, lalo na sa korte. So kung uh, soft-spoken ka at nag ka, baka mahirapan ka sa korte kasi syempre kailangan may konting angas. But ano ba yung angas? Ano ba yung standard para masabi natin, oh sobra na yan or pwede pa yan? Okay? Kasi sa CPR may ganun. Ano ba yung legal basis natin sa CPR? Okay? Ang palatandaan natin dyan, isulat nyo lang is AOO. Okay? Ano yung AOO? Sabi ng ating CPR, a lawyer shall not a lawyer shall not, in his professional dealings, use any language which is abusive, offensive, or otherwise improper. Okay? Again, a lawyer shall not, in his professional dealings, use any language which is abusive, offensive, or otherwise improper. And also, take note of the case of Jimeno versus Saide. Okay? Uh, this uh, Jimeno versus Saide, 2015 case. Bakit? Kasi sinabi ni Supreme Court dyan uh, that a lawyer is entitled to represent his case with courage. Pero, but, sometimes the lawyer gets carried away by his emotion during trial. But still, the language of the lawyer, ito parang flip top, parang rap lang. But still, the language of the lawyer must be empathic but respectful Empathic but respectful, convincing but not derogatory, 
and illuminating but not offensive. Okay, so take note of the case of Jimeno versus Saide, 2015 case. Okay, so uh, before we continue, please comment uh, VLC if you believe that you will pass the bar. Okay, VLC, type me lang VLC. Okay, let's support those who want to pass the bar na napakalaking tulong ng uh, VLC sa kanila. Okay, let's go back. Take note nga, as I have said, Jimeno versus Saide, sinabi ni Supreme Court, pag ang tanong po sa bar, ay itong si abogado ay medyo uh, napapaangas na yung pagsasalita niya, like in the case of uh, Dr. Vicky Bello, uh, that is the case of Bello Hinares versus Attorney Guevara. Diba? Kung naaalala niyo yun, this is very relevant right now, kasi in that case naman, sa Facebook pinos ni Attorney Guevara, ano yung nilagay na dun sa Facebook? Kasi, Summary lang ng story, may ang yung kliyente ni Attorney Guevara, syempre nagpunta kay Dr. Vicky Bello, may pinaayos. In short, hindi maganda yung uh, resulta. Pinailan nila ng uh, kaso si Vicky Bello. And ito naman si Attorney, sa kanyang Facebook, nagpo-post siya against kay Vicky Bello. Ano yung mga sinabi niya dun sa sa clinic ni Dr. Vicky Bello? That uh, Frankenstein factory, reyna ng payola, Reyna ng kaplastika, na kulang na lang, Arnidas and yun, Reyna. Anyway, so ang sabi ni Supreme Court, he violated this rule. Kasi sabi ng Supreme Court, a lawyer shall not in his professional dealings use any language which is abusive, offensive, or otherwise improper. And the law, the language of the lawyer in, in so far as to uh, the legal profession it should be empathic but still respectful. It should be convincing but not derogatory and it must be illuminating but not offensive. Okay? That's uh, the case of Jimeno versus Saide and uh, Belo Hinares versus Attorney Guevara. Okay? Um, next topic. Number two. Next topic. Ayun. Ayun. Next topic, important topic is the non-delegation of task. Non-delegation of task. Ano ba to? Uh, the leading case here is the case of Tapay versus Bangkolo. And it was as the bar exam. Uh, last year, uh, 2019 ata. Uh, uh, ano ba nangyari doon? Basically, si lawyer, wala siya sa office, nasa law firm, and siguro meron na kailangan i-submit na, na pleading. So, anong ginawa niya? In short, pinapirma na lang niya sa kanyang secretary. Okay? So, pinirma na lang ng secretary. Yung tawag, di ba, by, inay na na, pinirma ng secretary. So, pwede ba yun? Okay? So, sabi, of course, it is not allowed. Because, sabi sa ating uh, CPR, a lawyer shall not delegate to any unqualified person the performance of a task which by, which, uh, by law, may only be performed by member of the bar in good standing. Hindi naman member of the bar in good standing si secretary. Take note of the word task, ha? Huwag kayo malito sa task, saka dun sa commission. I mean to say, uh, pera. Yung commission. Hindi hindi commission or hindi fee ang binigay ni attorney dito. Ang, ang pinag-usapan natin dito is task. Okay? So, ang relevant uh, rule natin dito, yun nga, is that a lawyer is a lawyer should not delegate to any any unqualified person the performance of a task which by law may only be performed by a member of the bar in good standing. And take note, baka yung sa, sa facts sa bar nyo, ang dinelegate ni attorney A kay attorney B is yung uh, research, uh, drafting of uh, pleading. And then, ito pa lang si attorney B is uh, uh, currently sus suspended, suspended by the Supreme Court. Pwede ba yun? Abogado, si Atty. B. Ha? Dinelegate ni Atty. A kay, kay Atty. B. Yung pag-prepare uh, ng draft. Okay? And kahit pag-sign din. Pero yung pala, this Atty. B. is uh, presently suspended. Ma magiging liable ba si Atty. A? Yes. Kasi nga it is clear that the CPR provides that it should be delegated to a lawyer who is in good standing. Okay? So again, a lawyer shall not delegate to any unqualified person uh, the performance of a task which by law may only be performed by a member of the bar in good standing and another in that case tapay versus bangkolo ang pagpirma doon ni secretary is against the rules of court why 
Kasi ang legal effect, if a lawyer will sign a pleading, di ba? There are three legal effects. If a lawyer signs a pleading, number one, is that the lawyer has said the pleading. Number two, that there is a good ground to support it and it is not interposed for delay. Diba? So pag pumirma si lawyer, dapat nabasa niya yan. Di ba? So another one, a related case is Uy versus Attorney Maghari. Ano ba yung uh, kay, Ator, kay Uy versus Attorney Maghari? Well, basically, ano rin, it's about the signature of a lawyer na pleading. Siyempre, pag pumirma ang isang abogado, there are mandatory information which must be stated under the signature of a lawyer in all pleadings. Okay, ano ba yung mga nakikita nyo mga nakalagay ng information? Diba? Pag firma ni attorney sa pleading, una-una, kailangan may roll number. Okay, that's number one. Number two, uh, yung uh, receipt number and date of what? Of the IBP juice. Siyempre, kailangan taon-taon nagbabayad ka. So, ilalagay mo doon ano yung receipt number, yung IBP juice, at siyempre, yung date. Another one is the MCLE compliance number. Siyempre, every three, uh, three years, kailangan nag-aaten ng MCLE. Okay? MCLE compliance number. Another is PTR, professional tax receipt number. PTR number and then your uh, address and contact number. Okay? So, these are the mandatory information which must be stated under the signature or of every lawyer. Okay? Uh, another important topic, ito naman is about uh, division, non-division of fees. Non-division of fees. Ito naman, we're talking about fees, hindi tasks. Okay, pwede ba magbigay ng uh, fee or commission si attorney? Ano ba rule natin? Ang rule natin dyan ay a lawyer shall not divide or stipulate to divide any fee for legal compensation with any person not authorized to practice law. Okay, so ibig sabihin, pag non-lawyer, hindi pwede magbigay ba, sa, sa acceptance fee or sa acceptance fee, 5% ibibigay mo dun sa sa nag, nag, nag refer ng kaso hindi siya pwede hindi ka pwede hindi pwede magbigay sa attorney kasi nga sabi ng CPR nat sabi ng CPR natin a lawyer shall not divide or stipulate to divide any fee for legal services for legal services to any person not authorized to practice law but take note of the three exceptions okay so yung three exceptions natin is number one there's a pre, pre existing uh, agreement with the partner that upon the latter's death, di ba? Number two, the lawyer undertakes to complete and finish legal business. And number three, if the law firm includes a non-lawyer in a retirement plan. Okay, so those are the three exceptions. Okay, so basically, ito lang yung importante sa uh, duty of the lawyer to the legal profession or to the bar. Okay? So now, let's go now to the duty of the lawyer to the courts which is canon 10 to 13 okay but before we go on again uh, i hope uh, you are enjoying this webinar please again comment vlc okay please comment vlc so let's go now let's proceed to duty of the lawyer to the courts to the courts first important topic napaka importante at tinanong na rin sa 2016 bar okay can a lawyer criticize uh, the criticism against particular tayo ruling the rulings of the Supreme Court criticism against the ruling of the Supreme Court topic our topic now ngayon pag-uusapan natin is criticism against the rulings of the Supreme Court pwede ba criticize ni lawyer ni counsel yung mga rulings ng Supreme Court lip flopping or may iba iba uh, hindi hindi uh, walang walang basihan or whatever uh, in this case the real our leading case is the case of Saldivar versus Gonzales okay Saldivar versus Gonzales uh, basically ano ba nangyari doon kasi nga si attorney he was criticizing the Supreme Court 
Okay? But take note, ha? yung kinikriticize ni lawyer dito is already a final and executory decision. Kasi if the case is still pending, mapupunta siya dun sa violation ng subjudice rule. Okay? Yung subjudice rule, a lawyer should not make public statements in the media regarding a pending case tending to arouse public opinion for or against uh, party. We may not discuss. But, I'm talking about yung sa criticism against the ruling of the Supreme Court, yung decision po ay final and executory na para mag-apply itong uh, topic na to. Okay? So, sabi ni attorney dito na sa case ni eh, Saldivar versus Gonzalez, i-criticize yung rulings ng Supreme Court. And according to him, kaya niya, pwede niya illegally i-criticize because meron daw siyang constitutional right of freedom of expression. So, sa show cause niya, yun yung kanyang defense. I can criticize the ruling of the Supreme Court because it is a constitutional, uh, it is allowed under the constitution to have a freedom of expression. Yun yung expression niya. So, ano, ano kaya sabi ni Supreme Court? Ang sabi ni Supreme Court sa case ni Saldivar vs. Gonzalez, uh, the Supreme Court reminded the lawyer that, o nga, attorney, same thing as to all other constitutional rights. It is not unlimited. It is not absolute. Sabi ni Supreme Court. Now, the question is, ano ngayon yung standard? Ano ngayon yung standard daw na para pwede mo makariticize si Supreme Court? Sabi ngayon ni Supreme Court sa Saldivar vs. Gonzalez, the standard is the case of Inre Almasen. Inre Almasen. Okay? Inre Almasen. Anong, anong palatandaan sa Inre Almasen? Tandaan nyo lang, gatas at saka isang dingding wall. Okay? Gatas at dingding na wall. Bakit? Wait lang. Kasi, sabi sa Inre Almasen, sabi ni Supreme Court, the law, uh, anyone or a, uh, even a lawyer can criticize us, can criticize the rulings of the Supreme Court, can criticize the court. However, the ruling must be bona fide or bona fide. Meaning to say, it must be genuine. And it should not spill over the walls of decency and propriety. Diba? Gatas. Bona mi. Ah. Bona kid. Sorry. Anyway. In real masen, ang sabi lang ng Supreme Court, pwede nyo i-criticize ang rulings ng Supreme Court. Provided that the criticism is bona fide and it should not spill over the walls of decency and propriety. Okay? So that is the, the case of Saldivar versus Gonzalez. Criticism against the rulings of the Supreme Court. Another topic. Uh, what about criticism criticism against the personal or official conduct of a judge. So particular tayo dito sa judge. Ha? Kasi yung kanina, particular sa rulings ng Supreme Court. But still, you can uh, have a legal basis of yung in real masin sa criticism against uh, judge sa lower court federal. Pero to be specific, meron po ba tayong specific rule sa CPR which is related to criticism by a lawyer against the personal or even uh, official conduct of a judge? Meron po. Kasi let's say for example, ito si attorney, naiinis siya dun kay judge. Kasi si judge, pag nag nagtatrial, nagbibista, nakarobe, ang suot niya sa loob ay eh, kakaiba. Neon green na shirt, tapos neon yellow na pants, pink na medyas, Okay, tapos nakarug. Tapos nagbibis na si judge. So personal conduct ni judge yun. Tapos let's go sa official conduct. Si judge naman, meron siyang uh, order sa court na ang bawat abogado na mag-appear 3 hours before ng trial, ng trial ng abogado kailangan nakapag-log in na siya. So yun yung policy ni judge. So, so official conduct. So itong si isang abogado, hindi niya nagustuhan yung ganun. So kinriticize niya. Kinriticize niya ngayon tung tung judge na to okay probably nagfile na complaint sa Supreme Court Office of the Court Administrator but the defense of the judge is that no a lawyer cannot criticize my personal conduct okay even more so yung official conduct syempre yan ang policy namin sa court and gusto ko walang nalili but do you think the defense of the judge will prosper of course no because sabi ng ating CPR Una-una, general rule, a lawyer shall not criticize the personal or even the official conduct of a judge in an insulting or intemperate manner. Aye, aye. Okay? 
Kung sa language used by a lawyer, meron tayong AOO, abusive, offensive, or otherwise improper. Nag-apply siya sa language ng lawyer. Pag sinabi natin II, nag-apply naman siya sa specific, sa personal or official conduct ng judge. Kasi ito yung exception. So meaning to say, a lawyer can criticize the official or even the personal conduct of a judge provided it is not insulting or intemperate manner. So, pwede. And take note, in several cases, sabi ni Supreme Court, you can, a lawyer can criticize a judge, but take into consideration yung tinatawag natin na uh, constructive constructive criticism and destructive criticism. Okay? Sabi ni Supreme Court, pwede mo criticize yung court, pero provided, constructive criticism naman yan. Okay? Huwag destructive. So, ano ba yung constructive Ano ba itong constructive criticism? Uh, constructive criticism, if the criticism is only to, the purpose is only to rectify the errors made in good faith. Okay? On the other hand, it is a destructive criticism if the words used by the lawyer is offensive, derogatory, and the main purpose of the lawyer is to offend the court. So that is a destructive criticism. This is not allowed, destructive, but constructive criticism is allowed. Okay. So that's the second topic, important topic. Next topic is the grievances. Grievances of a lawyer against judges. Grievances against judges. Okay. Ano ba yung hypothetical example ko lagi? Uh, dahil sabi nila pag merong uh, legal dispute, Sabi nila pag may cause of action, saan una pumupunta ang magkaaway na party? Okay, Sir Tulfo. Okay? So, so, ang example natin, hypothetical example, mayroong isang abogado, uh, during the trial, pinagalitan siya ng judge, the judge uh, used offensive, derogatory languages against the lawyer in, in front of the public dun sa loob ng court. So, talaga minura yung abogado, sinabihan ng hindi magaganda. It so happened na itong si uh, si attorney, kaibigan niya, kunwari lang, kaibigan na si Sir Tulfo. So, pumunta siya sa radio station ni Tulfo, sa television show ni Tulfo. So, dun siya nagsabi na itong si judge na to, napaka mali ang ginagawa, minumura in public, yung dapat maparusahan, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, in that case, do you think the lawyer will be administratively liable. Yes, he can be disbarred in that case. Why? Because that is prohibited. Kasi sabi ng CPR, a lawyer shall submit grievances against a judge only to proper authorities. And we all know that the proper authorities, if you want to file an ad, ad, uh, uh, admin complaint against a judge, go to the Supreme Court. Saan sa Supreme Court? Wag sa OBC, wag sa Office of the Bar Confident kasi kumbaga ang jurisdiction ng OBC is private practitioner. If you want to file a complaint against a judge or uh, judicial employee, go to the Office of the Court Administrator, legal office. Doon kayo magpapail ng uh, grievances nyo, complaint nyo against the judge. So mali na ang abogado na nagsasabi siya ng sama ng loob against a judge kung saan saan. Because sabi ng CPR, a lawyer shall submit grievances against a judge only to proper authorities. Okay? And the last one, last important topic for me, the duty of the lawyer to the courts. Number four is, of course, we all know the sub, sub judice rule. Sub judice rule. Okay? So, ano ba yung sub judice rule? Why is it being prohibited under the CPR? It is being prohibited under the CPR kasi sabi ni CPR, diba? a lawyer shall not make public statements in the media regarding a pending case tending to arouse public opinion for or against a party. Himayin natin, tatlo, sub judice rule, number one, a lawyer shall not make public statements saan? In the media. Number two, regarding a pending case, it should be pending. So kung ang kaso ay may decision na, pero hindi pa file ng secretary kasi may nag-file ng MR, pasok pa rin siya. Eh, number three, 
tending to arouse public opinion for or against a party. Tending to arouse opinion, public opinion for or against a party. Okay? So, but don't use uh, this subjudicial rule indiscriminately kasi as we can see sa television, but may mga nagpapa-interview naman ng mga abogado. Pero hindi naman sila nasa subject sa, sub sa violation ng sa subjudicial rule. Bakit? Let's say for example, ito si lawyer. Katulad ng example ko kanina na tinanggap niya yung kaso ng isang sikat na sikat na celebrity. Okay? So let's say for example, nag-meeting sila ni celebrity si Attorney Del May naka-pending na kaso si si ano ba yung sabi ko kanina si Beshi Celebrity Girl. Okay, naka-pending yung kaso nila. So let's say nag-meeting sila sa isang restaurant kasi isasalang na si Celebrity Girl na laman ng media. Alam niyo naman si media na mabilis makakuha ng uh, ano yan, information. Nag-antay ngayon sa labas ng restaurant yung maraming media personnel. They want to interview the celebrity and yung lawyer. Okay? So, paglabas ngayon ng lawyer, sa aming celebrity, lapit yung media. Tinanong ngayon si attorney, attorney, uh, is it true na may pending case si celebrity girl? Sabi ngayon ni attorney, ganito, Yes, there is a pending annulment case filed before RTC Manila Branch 1 and I think it will be granted. That's all. Period. Okay? Question. Pwede ba ma-subject uh, for this, pwede ba ma-disbarred because of violating the subjudicial rules si attorney in that case? No. Why? Let's check dito sa mga elements ha. Si lawyer ba, the he may made a public statement sa media yes kasi nagpa-interview siya regarding a pending case pending ba yung case yes number 3 does it tend to arouse public opinion for or against a party i don't think so sinabi lang naman niya na may pending na kaso dito sa korte na to period okay so walang subjudicial rule kaya pag kayo nagpa-interview ng isang sensational case ganun lang yung sabihin niyo otherwise Okay, magsasabi ng mga statement, statements that will tend to arouse public opinion for or against a party para hindi kayo ma-subjudice. Okay? Now, uh, I'll just want to clarify kasi sa codal nyo, maraming nga nagano, yung uh, criticism against the conduct of a judge, criticism against the conduct of a judge, ito, nasa 11.05 yan. 11.05. Criticism against the conduct of a judge. Ano yung nakalagay doon sa 11.05? A lawyer shall not criticize uh, the personal or even the official conduct of a judge in an insulting and temporary manner. Sa CODAL, wala po yan ata, if I'm not mistaken. Wala po yan sa 11.05. Pero sa all other books, sa iba, sa ano, sa, meron talaga sa CPR. Especially, like in my case, basahin yung sa book ni Pineda. Sa 11.05, nakalagay po yan. Pero sa CODAL, wala nakalagay. And then yung uh, grievances against judges, yung a lawyer shall submit grievances against judges only to proper authorities. Yan ata yung nakalagay sa CODAL na 11.05. Pero, ang totoo, yan po ay nasa 11.06. 11.06. Okay? So, to recap, before we go dito sa criticism against, ah, dito sa duty of the lawyer to the client, recap muna tayo. Ano yung rule natin? Pag ang tanong sa bar is about criticism against the rulings of the Supreme Court. Okay, ano yung ano natin? Uh, leading case, Saldivar versus Gonzalez. Kahit hindi nyo na ilagay yung, yung uh, type, yung juris, name ng jurisprudence. Basta sabihin nyo lang, yes, pwede i-criticize because of the constitutional right of freedom of expression. However, it is not absolute and unlimited. There is a limitation and the limitation again is the in real masen case which was penned by justice uh, Castro and in that in real masen napakaimportante dahil pwede niyo ilagay sa lahat ng tanong about criticism against the court you can criticize the court provided that the criticism is bona fide and it should not spill over the walls of decency and propriety okay now specifically kung gusto i-criticize ni attorney ang personal conduct or even the official conduct ni judge anong uh, Anong rule natin? Ang um, legal basis na sasabihin natin? A lawyer should not criticize the personal or even the official conduct of a judge in an insulting and intemperate manner. Meaning pwede wag lang insulting and intemperate manner. And of course, 
the lawyer should use the constructive criticism. The lawyer should be in good faith that he just want to rectify the errors. Do not use this destructive criticism. And in destructive again, the lawyer is using offensive languages which tends to offend the court. Okay? Grievances against judges. Okay? Diretso pag si, kayo naging abogado at may problema kayo sa judge sa Supreme Court o kaya kayo pumunta. Huwag po saan-saan. Dahil you will violate yung CPR which provides that a lawyer shall submit grievances against a judge only to proper authorities. And then the last one, importante, bar favorite, subjudicial rule. A lawyer shall not make public statements in the media regarding a pending case tending to arouse public opinion for or against a party. Okay? So, again, if I hope you're enjoying this webinar, so please, please, please comment VLC. Okay? Now, let's go now to the duty of the lawyer to the client. Okay? Duty to the lawyer to the client, which is uh, Canon 19... Canon 19 to 22, okay? So, first, ang lagay natin is about ano muna yung general rule if a party or, or if someone wants to avail the services of a lawyer, okay? Uh, kasi ang general rule natin, batandaan nyo, pag may gustong lumapit at hingi ng legal, uh, legal services ni attorney, ito muna ang unang papasok sa atin. General rule natin rin, General rule natin. A lawyer shall not refuse. A lawyer shall not refuse his services to the needy. Okay, that is a general rule. A lawyer shall not refuse to render legal services to the needy. That's a general rule. So, pag merong, pag naging abogado na kayo, pag may lumapit sa inyo, you should render legal services pag kailangan ng tool ang, ang legal services nyo. Okay? But also, take note. Uh, take note of the instances wherein sinabi specifically ng CPR yung mga cases wherein a lawyer cannot decline. Okay? May tatlo kasi dyan specific under the uh, duty of the lawyer to the client. Number one is, Number one, yung sinasabi ng, ng CPR na a lawyer shall not decline to represent a person solely, take note of the word solely, solely on account of the latter's race, sex, creed, status of life, or because of his own opinion regarding the guilt of the accused. Okay, again, that's specific, okay? Uh, a, lawyer shall not, a lawyer shall not decline Lawyer shall not decline to represent a person solely on account of the latter's race, sex, creed, status of life, or because of his own personal opinion regarding the guilt of the accused. Now, maganda discuss natin dito uh, yung losing criminal case and losing civil case. Kasi pag losing criminal case, let's say for example, hypothetical example, Uh, kayo, abogado ba, uh, may lumapit sa inyo isang tao na accused of a crime of murder okay, syempre um, uh, tinanggap niyo yung kaso but during the pendency of the case parang na-feel nyo na mukhang guilty itong kliyente ko mukhang siya talaga pumatay so it's so happy to cut the long uh, story short, sinabi ngayon ni client nyo, attorney Aamin po ako sa inyo. Ako po talaga ang pumatay. So, meaning to say, guilty talaga siya. Question. Hawak niyo na yung kaso. Is it uh, ethical for you to withdraw from being uh, his or her lawyer? Pwede ba? Dahil siyempre, sabihin niyo na, eh, hey, guilty to is dapat dito i-represent kasi siya naman talaga yung pumatay. Can you uh, refuse to handle a losing criminal case? Okay. Second question muna tayo. What about if it is a losing civil case? Civil case naman. A losing 
civil case. Hypothetical example, lumapit si kliyente. Attorney, file natin si kapitbahay ko ng collection of sum of money of 1 million kasi nangutang siya sa akin. Okay? Pero attorney ha, nabayaran na niya ako ang problema after 1 year or 2 years na ako nabayaran. So, para mabigyan ng leksyon, file natin ng collection of sum of money or damages or whatever. In that case, is it at is it ethical for the lawyer not to accept the case? Okay, so puntahan mo natin yung first. Losing criminal case. Si attorney yung maming sa kanya na si accused talagang pumatay. Should he withdraw from the case? Uh, should, is it ethical for him to decline to represent that, uh, that accused? No. Why? Kasi nga, as we have discussed, sabi ng CPR, a lawyer shall not decline to represent a person solely on account of the latter's race, sex, creed, status of life, or because of his own personal opinion regarding the guilt of the accused. So that is the first reason. Second reason, anong sabi ng Supreme Court? First of all, second pala, there is a constitutional presumption presumption of innocence. Okay? And third, third one is that it is only the court it is only the court who has the right to say whether or not the accused is guilty or not. Okay, so if it is a losing criminal case, you are, legally speaking, you are not allowed to refuse to accept it. Kasi nga, as I have discussed yung uh, CPR provision, and of course, there is a presumption of innocence on the part of the accused, and it is only the court who has the right to say that guilty siya or hindi siya guilty. So, attorney, paano kung ganun yung tanong sa bar? Paano ko i-represent si accused? Madali lang, punta po kayo doon sa duty of a lawyer, sa Rule 138. Ano ang sabi doon? A lawyer should still accept that, that criminal, losing criminal case. Anong trabaho na, ano na lang ang gagawin ni lawyer? Anong dapat gawin ni lawyer? He should see to it that what? There is observance of due process. Observance of due process. And number two, that he should present all evidence which is legal and uh, which is uh, legal under the law in order to uh, help the accused. Okay? So you should still accept the case. But so far as the civil case is concerned, if it is a losing, if it is a losing civil case, should you refuse, should you decline to represent it? Yes, you can decline to represent such losing civil case. Why? Because if you will accept that case, pwede pa kayo madisbar. Bakit kayo madidisbar? It will be a violation of the lawyer's oath. Do you still remember? Sabi ng lawyer's oath, a lawyer shall not wittingly nor willingly promote any groundless suit. Okay? Number two pa, take note. Ano yung sinasabi dun sa so we have discussed kanina? What is what are the legal effects of a uh, signature of a lawyer in uh, in a pleading? But number one, he has read the pleading. And take note of the number two. There is a good ground to support it. So kung magpa-file kayo ng kaso na wala namang cause of action, losing civil case, violation ng rules of court yun. Kasi if you will sign a pleading, you are a lawyer, you will sign a pleading, you are uh, saying that there is a good ground to support it. Okay? So number... Number two, dun tayo sa except, dun tayo sa number two or letter B. In so far as to uh, appointment by the court, uh, appointment by the court as a counsel, the official, appointment by the court as an amicus curi, and request by the IBP, request by the IBP to render free legal services. Okay? Basic lang naman yung rules. A lawyer cannot decline uh, appointment by the court as a counsel de officio. Sino yung counsel de officio? He is a lawyer appointed by the court to uh, represent uh, to represent the accused. Okay? And then who is an amicus curi? An amicus curi, syempre yung paakibat ng words, friend of the court. But amicus curi, uh, to have a, a good explanation, a good uh, definition, an amicus curi, he or she is an impartial impartial counsel bakit sinabi impartial kasi hindi siya dapat abogado ng either party so an amicus curiae is an impartial lawyer who is 
uh, invited by the court. Bakit siya invite ng court? Because he is uh, he has a good knowledge in so far to a special field of law. Okay? And then this uh, third a lawyer may not refuse to, he may not decline to render free legal services requested by the IBP. Okay, so again, ulitin ko lang yung kanina sa solicitation of legal business, pwede may uh, i-advertise na may free legal services if it is requested by the IBP. But pag inyong private capacity lang, lalagay nyo lang para ma-advertise ma kayo sa private capacity, lalagay nyo free legal consultation that is a prohibited solicitation of legal business. So another one, letter C, in so far as to uh, indigents. Indigents, mga indigent client. Okay, so ang general rule natin, a lawyer may not refuse to represent an indigent. Except may dalawang exception. Okay, may dalawang exception wherein a lawyer may refuse to represent an indigent. If there is, paiksiin natin para mas madali tandaan, if there is lack of capacity, uh, lack of, of uh, if uh, there is incompetence, incompetence, and if there will be a conflict of interest. Okay? If there is incompetence or if there is a uh, conflict of interest, a lawyer may refuse to rep represent an indigent. Okay? And dito pala sa appointment as counsel de officio, amicus curie, and to render free legal services as requested by the IBP. Ang exception natin dyan ay medyo broad. Uh, sufficient cost. Sufficient cost lang ang pwedeng uh, exception. Okay. Now, next topic. Uh, another important topic is of course, bar favorite, privilege communication. Okay? Privilege communication. So, Ah, uh, kailan ba mag apply yung privilege communication? Meaning to say, kailan ba yung mga information given by the client to the lawyer hindi pwede i-divulge ng lawyer, okay? Just take note of the three requisites. First of all, there must be an attorney client relationship or take note of this or a prospective client. Meaning to say kahit wala pang attorney client relationship, prospective client pa lang siya in the sense na nag uh, interview pa lang siya ni lawyer na hindi pa inaccept ni lawyer as a uh, prospective client pwede pumasok pa rin yung uh, privilege communication number two requisite that the information given by the client to the lawyer was intended to be confidential okay the information given by the client to the lawyer was intended to be confidential and the last one that the information given by the client to the lawyer was made during the professional employment. Okay? So these are the three requirements of privileged communication. Another uh, topic after this uh, privileged communication is uh, discuss muna natin pala yung case ni uh, Burbe versus Magulta. Uh, why is it important? Because in that case, the Supreme Court uh, discussed the requisites uh, how to determine whether there is an existence of attorney-client relationship. So, attorney-client relationship, paano daw merong uh, uh, mag-aarise ng attorney-client relationship? That, 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 that was discussed in the case of Burbe versus Magulta. So, ano ngayon ang sabi ni Supreme Court sa Burbe versus Magulta? Meron daw attorney-client relationship. Okay? If, number one, a person a person in so far as to his business or troubles of any kind consults a lawyer. Okay? That's number one. Uh, a person with respect to his business of, or, or troubles of any kind, he consults a lawyer. Okay? Number two, what is his purpose? The purpose ni client. With the purpose of uh, obtaining legal advice. Yun yung purpose, hindi lang basta makapag-chismisan, makapag-kwentuhan. The second requisite is that uh, his uh, purpose is to obtain legal advice. And number three, that the lawyer voluntarily permits with the consultation. The lawyer voluntarily permits the consultation. 
So those are the three re requisites uh, in order uh, in order the in order to have an attorney client relationship. Okay? Now, next topic. Ito, three stars. This is about conflict. Conflict of interest. Okay? Conflict of interest. First of all, uh, kailangan muna natin malaman paano ba nagkakaroon, para natin masasabi, legally speaking, na may conflict of interest. Okay? So, in the case of uh, Monares versus Attorney Munoz, in the case of Monares versus Attorney Munoz, sabi ng Supreme Court, may dalawang test to determine whether or not there is an existence of conflict of interest. Yung tinatawag na inconsistency test, inconsistency test, and the other one is the confidential information test. Confidential information test. Sorry sa writing ko talagang medyo di maintindihan. Pero sin at least, uh, pakinggan nyo na lang sa sinasabi ko, yun din naman yung nakasulat. Anyway, so conflict of interest, two tests. Inconsistency test and conflict of interest test. Pero dito sa inconsistency test, tatlo yung uh, in-enumerate ng Supreme Court kung kailan may uh, conflict of interest using the inconsistency test. Okay? So, keywords lang ang tatandaan po natin. Unahin natin yung, uh, yung uh, keyword na uh, argue. Bakit siya argue? Kasi ganito, first, first test is that if the lawyer will accept the second client, his, and if that lawyer will argue for the first client, okay? his argument for the first client will be opposed by himself if he will argue for the second client. Okay? So that's the first inconsistent, inconsistency test. Okay? Argue, oppose. Argue, oppose. Those are the ano, keywords. Again, if the lawyer will accept the second client or the second uh, retainer, and if he will argue for the first client, his argument will be opposed by himself if he will argue for the second client. Okay? So, that's the first inconsistency test. Number two. Okay? This, ito madali tandaan kasi actually nag-a-apply siya sa mga relationship, sa love life. Um, unfaithfulness and double dealing. Yung keywords natin. Unfaithfulness or double dealing. Ano naman to? If the lawyer will accept the second client or second retainer, it will invite suspicion or suspicion of unfaithfulness or double dealing in the performance of his duties. Okay? So again, if in accept down the attorney yung second client or second retainer, this will invite suspicion of and faithfulness and double dealing in his uh, in in performing his duty. So that's the second. The third inconsistency test is uh, if the lawyer will accept the second client, it will require the lawyer to perform an act which will injure the first client. Okay. So again. If the, if the lawyer will accept the second client, uh, the lawyer will be required to perform an act which will injuriously affect the first client. So, yun yung pangatlong inconsistency test. And then, dito sa confidential information test, okay, uh, simple lang. If the lawyer will accept the second client, the lawyer will use those confidential information obtained from the first client against the second client or vice versa. Okay, again, if the lawyer will accept the second client, such lawyer uh, will use those confidential information obtained from the first client against the second client and then vice versa din. Okay, so pag may na-obtain si attorney ng mga confidential information at magagamit na yun dun sa kabilang party, kabilang client, there is a conflict of interest under the confidential information test. Okay? So, clear na tayo sa conflict of interest. Memorize those uh, tests. Now, question. Hypothetical question. 
let's say for example you are a law you are a, a retainer lawyer of a let's say Mitsubishi Mitsubishi Corporation so you are a retainer lawyer of Mitsubishi Corporation it so happened that um, yung CEO ng Toyota was your best friend okay? Toyota Mitsubishi you are a, you are a retainer lawyer of Mitsubishi uh, yung CEO ng Toyota is your best friend. Sabi niya, attorney, gusto kitang maging retainer lawyer din ng Toyota. Okay? So, question, basic question. Is there a possibility that such lawyer can also be a retainer lawyer of Toyota? Meron ba? Initially speaking, parang wala. Kasi parang there's a conflict of interest. But under the CPR 15.03, it, it can be done. Bakit? Ano ba sinasabi ng 15.03? Sabi ng uh, CPR natin, general rule, a lawyer shall not represent conflicting interests except if it is with number one, written. Take note of the word written, consent from both or all of the parties. And, and, subjunctive word and, number two, after full Take note of the word full. After full disclosure of facts. Okay? So, pwede ka rin po maging uh, abogado ng kalabang kumpanya kahit na magkakaroon ng conflict of interest. Kung makakakuha kayo ng written consent from both parties and after full disclosure of facts. Okay? Next topic. Of course, another important topic, right, na wala nang masusulatan, So just note, another important topic is yung what you call uh, influence peddling. Okay? Laging nangyayari sa, sa atin yan, di ba? Pag nahawakan ng uh, abogado yung isang kaso and it so happy na yung kaso ay nandun sa korte ng judge na kakilala niya or kabrad niya. Anong gagawin niya? Pag-ayabag niya kay client, huwag ka mag-alala. Kabrad ko yan. Nagkakaroon tayo ng favorable judgment yan. Kabrad ko yan. Malaki utang na loob sa akin yan. What do you call that act? That is influence peddling and it is not allowed under the CPR kasi sabi ng CPR natin a lawyer shall not state or imply or imply to state that he is able to influence a court a legislative body or a public official okay so that is in influence peddling okay next let's talk about negligence of the lawyer negligence Okay. Negligence of the lawyer. U basic ano, ang kamalian ba ng abogado? Will it bind the client? Is the negligence of the lawyer? Will it bind the client? Even procedural aspects? Yes. Ano ang general rule natin? The client is bound by the mistakes of the, the lawyer or client. Even mga procedural aspects. Okay? So that's the general rule. A, a client is bound by the mistakes or negligence of a lawyer, even procedural mistakes. Okay? But take note of the exceptions. Or the exception. Meaning to say na kahit na mali si lawyer dun sa procedural aspect na yun, hindi ito magiging binding kay client. So ano ang exception natin? Kailangan present yung dalawang requisite. Una-una, the negligence... The negligence or mistake of the lawyer must be so grave. Okay, gross. It must be grave. It must be gross. The negligence and the mistake of the lawyer must be gross. In the sense that the client was deprived of his day in court. That's number one. Number two, and, kailangan kasama to, and it should not be accompanied by the client's own negligence. Okay? So, pag present yung dalawang yun, yung kamalian ng attorney, it will not bind the client. Okay? Ne negligence. Another uh, important topic. Uh, in so far as to the uh, procedural uh, aspect, discretion as to, to matters of procedure. Kasi sometimes, meron tayong, tayong mga abogado, meron tayong mga nakukuha client na karamihan, mga law student din. Eh. Uh, minsan nagmamarunong pa sa abogado, o attorney, gusto ko dito mo i-file yan, o attorney, gamitan mo ng ganitong ground. 
Okay? In that case, sa tingin nyo, pwede ba mag-withdraw si lawyer? Yes. Kasi sabi sa atin sa, sa uh, CPR, uh, a lawyer shall not allow his client to dictate the matters of procedure in handling the case. Again, the, a lawyer shall not allow his client to dictate the matters of procedure in handling the case. We need to say, when it comes to procedural matters, ang masusunod po ay at abogado. But, in terms of, uh, in terms of sub substantive matters, substantive aspect, like for example, appeal, kung gusto mo ba mag-appeal o hindi, it is a sub substantive aspect. In such case, ang masusunod po ay ang discretion ng client. Okay? So, to sum up, pag procedural matters, only the lawyer. Pag pakailamero si client, pwede mag-withdraw si lawyer. But in so far as sa substantive aspect, ang susunod ay si client, hindi si lawyer. Anong example natin? Let's say, for example, uh, si lawyer na, na ang kaso niyang hawak ay murder. Okay? Murder yung kaso nila ni client. Okay? So, nagkaroon ng judgment. Ang judgment, sabi ng court, liable, ano to, uh, criminally liable ng homicide. Take note, ang kaso niya is murder. Okay? Tapos, nagkaroon ng judgment yung court, ang ruling lang ng court is homicide. Okay? Tapos ngayon, sabi ngayon yung attorney, accuse, uh, client accused, appeal tayo. Appeal tayo. Or to appeal, appeal tayo. Kasi, hindi na pakinggan na mabuti ng lower court yung defense natin, yung self-defense aspect natin. Appeal tayo. Ano ngayon ang sabi ng kliyente? Attorney, okay na yan. Kasi at least homicide, bumaba. Sabi ngayon naman ni attorney, hindi. Alam ko yan, abogado ko. Appeal natin. So, in appeal from RTC, in appeal sa CA, or umabot pa sa Supreme Court, ang problema, sinabi, liable ng murder. Okay? So, bumalik tuloy sa murder. So, syempre, nagalit to si accused client. Pinaila, pinailan niya ngayon ng disbarment complaint si attorney. Do you think the disbarment complaint will prosper? Yes, it will prosper. Why? Because even though the rule is that a lawyer shall not allow his client to dictate the matters of procedure in handling the case, in so far as to appeal is concerned, it is the discretion of the client that will prevail. Because such appeal is considered as substantive aspect. Okay? Tanong, paano ngayon kung talagang wala namang merito yung kaso para i-appeal? Ang sabi, di ba we have settled na substantive aspect yung pag appeal Sinabi naman ngayon ni kliyente, attorney, i-appeal mo yan. Kahit na para sa abogado, it is, uh, it is not meritorious. What is the proper way, what is the ethical way to do ng abogado? I-appeal ba ni abogado kahit na, na hindi uh, non-meritorious dahil gusto lang ni client? Sabi sa, atin, sabi sa libro, in such case, the proper remedy of the lawyer is to withdraw from the case. Okay? It is justifiable to withdraw from the case. Why? Again, let's go back to your uh, lawyer's oath. Di ba? If the appeal is uh, not meritorious, wag mo na appeal kahit na discretion ng uh, client yung masusunod. Kasi, pag in mo yan as a lawyer, you will violate the Lawyer's oath, where it provides that a lawyer shall not willingly nor willingly promote or sue any groundless suit. Okay? Now, another uh, important topic. Uh, last three topic. Okay? Let's go now to attorney's fees. Attorney's uh, fees. Uh, gusto ko lang niwanagin dito sa attorney's fees. Magkaiba yung two concepts of attorney's fees and magkaiba yung two kinds of retainer fees. Okay? Okay, wala sa ganyan. Two kinds of, uh, two concepts of attorney's fees. Iba yan sa two kinds of retainer fee or retainer agreement, okay? Magkaiba yan. Bakit? These two concepts of uh, attorney's fees, ano ba yan? Yung tinatawag natin na ordinary concept of attorney's fee, ordinary. 
ordinary concept and yung tinatawag natin na extra ordinary concept. On the other hand, when we talk about two kinds of retainer fee, hindi yan ordinary sa extraordinary kasi yan ay is either general retainer or special special retainer. Okay? So, yung two concepts of attorney's fees. Excuse me. So, yung two concepts of attorney's fees, ordinary and extraordinary. Ano ba itong ordinary? Ordinary concept of attorney's fee. These are reasonable compensation paid to the lawyer for his legal services rendered. Okay? Again, ordinary concept of attorney's fees. These are reasonable compensation paid to the lawyer for the legal services he has rendered. So, anong ibig sabihin? Itong fee na to ay mapupunta kay attorney. Okay? Ngayon, liwanagi natin, itong extraordinary concept of attorney's fee, hindi ito mapupunta kay attorney kahit natawag sa kanya ay attorney's fee. Okay? Kasi ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng extraordinary concept of attorney's fee? These are indemnity for damages. These are indemnity for damages ordered by the court to be paid by the losing party to the prevailing party. So, ibig sabihin, ibabayad siya, ibibigay siya sa winning party, sa prevailing party, hindi necessarily sa abogado. Okay? Again, extraordinary concept of attorney's fees. Extraordinary, keyword, indemnity for damages. Ordered by the court, si court ang nag-order, to be paid by the losing party to the prevailing party. Now, let's go now to retainer fee. Two kinds of retainer fee. General retainer and special retainer. Ano ba pinagkaiba nito? Pag tinatanong ko lang sa klase, ano ba sa pag kayo naging abogado at kinuha kayo ng isang kumpanya as retainer lawyer, sa tingin nyo, ano mas malaki ang, ang retainer fee? Lahat sila, majority, halos lahat, sinasabi nila special retainer. But if, uh, but if you can see, mas, I think mas malaki ang general retainer. Why? Because uh, the lawyer... Uh, when we when we talk about uh, general retainer, this is uh, a lawyer will be covered na lahat ng uh, mga legal uh, legal problems. Unlike dito sa special retainer, may specific case or specific subject lang na hawak tong retainer lawyer. So pag sinabing general, pangkalahatan, lahat ng legal dispute, problema ng abogado. Unlike pag special retainer, o oh, dito ka lang sa tax cases, okay, so special siya. And another important uh, tip, magkaiba po ang retainer fee sa retaining lien. Okay? Retainer fee versus retaining lien. We will discuss later yung retaining lien. But basically, when we talk about retainer fee, bayad kay retainer lawyer, ah, kay, tama, kay retainer lawyer because of his uh, legal services in order for the, let's say for example, the company, to secure the future services of the lawyer. Yun yung retainer fee. Reasonable compensation paid to the lawyer in order to secure the lawyer's future services. On the other hand, when we talk about retaining lien, uh, it is not payment. In fact, hindi nga nabayaran si lawyer dyan sa retaining lien. Discuss natin pa ngayon. Okay? So, we're talking about fees. Another important concept sa fees ay yung pinatawag natin na quantum merwit. Now, let's go now to the principle of uh, quantum merwit. Quantum merwit. Ano ba itong uh, quantum merwit? So, quantum merwit, uh, these are reasonable uh, compensation to the lawyer as much as he deserves. Okay? Uh, quantum merwit, but don't use this principle... Uh, uh, indiscriminately. Kasi nag apply lang ang quantum merwit in five uh, instances. Okay? So, i-apply mo lang yung quantum merwit as much as he deserve na uh, compensation for the lawyer if, number one, if there is no contract between the lawyer and the client. And so far as to the legal services. There is no contract, ano ngayon ang ibabayad mo kay attorney? Magkano? 
Mabayaran mo pa rin ba si Atone kahit na walang kontrata? Yes! Magkano? As much as he deserve. Quanto merwi. Number two. Uh, may kontrata nga. There's a contract. But the attorney's fees is unconscionable. Okay? Let's say for example, uh, collection of sum of money na 1 million lang yung kaso pero ang acceptance fee ni lawyer ay 500,000. In that case, babayaran pa rin ba si lawyer? Yes, babayaran pa rin. Pero hindi naman siguro 500,000. Babayaran pa rin siya. Pero as much as he deserve. Quanto merit ang uh, principle will apply. Number three, there is a contract. Uh, there's a contract, but the parties, the lawyer and the client agreed to disregard the contract. Not number four, there is a contract, but the contract is void. Okay? For whatever legal reason, the contract is void. Babayaran mo pa rin ba si attorney? Of course, babayaran mo pa rin siya under the principle of quantum merit. As much as the lawyer deserves. And the last one, yung uh, tinanong dati sa bar, wherein the uh, tinangga sa lower court, sa attorney A, si client, sa lower court, natalo. Tapos pag-appeal, natalo pa rin si attorney A at si client sa sa RTC now uh, anong ginawa ng ni client tinanggal niya si client ang nag-decide tinanggal niya si attorney A attorney 1 okay so uh, the client availed the services of attorney 2 pagdating doon nila sa appeal sa court of appeals nanalo ng supreme court nanalo so merong award may damages awarded kay client question entitled ba si attorney 1 to be paid kahit na siya yung ta kahit na talo siya sa lower court sa MTC and sa RTC entitled ba si uh, lawyer 1 yes entitled siya the principle of quantum merit as much as he deserve will apply because yung sa fifth instance wherein quantum merit will apply ano yung fifth if the lawyer fails to finish the case with justifiable reason okay in this case justifiable ba yes because it is the uh, client who uh, terminates the services of the lawyer. Pero pagbalik na rin natin, kung ang bumitaw, ang nag-withdraw without the consent of the client, the client is the lawyer, hindi siya papasok dun sa fifth enumeration. Okay? Quantum merit, as much as, it, as much as the lawyer deserves. Now, let's go now to my last two topics. Uh, very, import very important pa rin. Siyempre, yung tinatawag nating retaining yen. Retaining. Retaining. And yung charging yen. Okay, ano ba tong retaining yen? Ano ba tong charging yen? Okay, uh, para mas maintindihan natin yung prinsipyo na tong dalawa, you should be familiar first dun sa rule sa CPR which provides that a lawyer shall return the money or property of the client when due or upon demand. Okay, so kasi yun yung, yun yung general rule natin. The, the lawyer should return the money or the property of the lawyer when due or upon demand of the client. Okay? Uh, ang problema, paano kung hindi pala na fully paid si attorney? Okay? Pag hindi siya na fully paid, unsatisfied attorney's fee, Diyan pwede pumasok ang retaining lien or charging lien. Okay? Uh, why? Because, ano ba, ang mga, ano ba muna ang requisite ng retaining lien? First of all, there must be an attorney-client attorney, attorney -client relationship. We're talking about retaining lien. Huh? There must be an attorney-client relationship. Period. Hindi pwede ang prospective client. Number two, there is an unsatisfied attorney's fee. Hindi na bayaran or kulang ang bayad kay attorney. Okay? Number three, ito na yung uh, important re requisite ng retaining lien na difference niya dito sa charging lien. Number three, sa retaining lien, uh, this applies only to papers, money, documents lawfully obtained by the lawyer from the client. Okay? It pertains to what? Documents, papers, or money, which was lawfully obtained by the lawyer from the client. So, in layman, 
pina pinaubaya or yung trust pinatago muna ni client kay attorney. Pag kinuha ni attorney yung let's say PCT dahil alam niya hindi siya mababayaran that hindi siya papasok sa retaining lien. Okay? Number four, it must be exercised before judgment. Before judgment. Kung makikita, makikita nyo mamaya, yun ang difference sila sa charging lien after final judgment. So, pag retaining lien, before final judgment. And uh, number five, of course, there, there must be notification sa client ni attorney na i-exercise na yung retaining lien. And number six, accounting. There should be proper accounting. Okay? Now, ito namang charging lien. Ano yung charging lien? Parehas siya dito sa una. Siyempre, dapat may attorney-client relationship. Okay, number two, kaya kung mapasok ng charging lien and retaining lien din, kasi may unsatisfied attorney's fee. Hindi na bayaran or kulang. Okay, now, this is the main difference between charging and retaining. Number three, sa charging, okay, charging lien can be exercised only after favorable money judgment. Okay? Favorable na money judgment pa. Of course, pag dapat may judgment na hindi siya pwede exercise before judgment. Hindi pwede exercise si charging lien before judgment. Dapat after judgment and the judgment is favorable and it is about money. Okay? Number four, the lawyer should put into the records of the case that he is claiming his charging lien. Again, the lawyer should put into the records of the case that he or she is claiming or exercising his right to charging lien. Ano yun? Manifest. Magmamanifest si attorney na isama sa execution yung bayad sa kanya dahil kulang ang bayad sa kanya ni client. Okay? Tapos another uh, requisite para sa retaining, kailangan notification for purposes of due process. So notify mo si client na i-exercise mo yung charging lien and the last one, proper accounting. Okay? Now, uh, so hopefully, hopefully clear yung retaining lien sa charging lien. So again, I want to reiterate, pumapasok lang ang retaining lien and charging lien pag hindi na bayaran or kulang ang naibayad kay attorney and satisfied attorney's fees. Okay? Paano ba yun, attorney? Hindi na bayaran si... Hindi na bayaran si attorney. Pwede bang hindi ibigay ni attorney yung mga pinatago sa kanya or yung perang pinadeposit sa kanya which is prop of which is money ni client kasi may utang eh di ba kung, kung titingnan mo layman pwede dapat i-offset but it is not allowed why because sabi ng CPR natin the lawyer shall return the money or property of the client when due or upon demand and take note in a long line of cases sabi ng Supreme Court the failure of the lawyer to return the money or the property of the client, anong-anong effect nun? There will be a presumption of misappropriation. And sinabi rin ni Supreme Court, sa, in many cases, pag ganun yung uh, nangyari na hindi binalik ni attorney yung pera kasi nga may utang sa kanya si client, may legal fees na hindi nabayari si client. Sabi ni Supreme Court, the lawyer cannot unilaterally appropriate the money or property of the client just because of the mere fact that there is unsatisfied attorney's fees. Okay? For retaining lien, for judgment, lawful possession, pinahiram, pinaubaya ni client yung property, documents kay uh, attorney. Charging lien, don't forget about the favorable money judgment. Okay? Now, my last topic It's about contingent fee agreement or payment or uh, and the other one is the CHAM Pertus contract. Okay. Contingent fee agreement and CHAM Pertus contract. Okay. So, anong ginagawa natin? Like in my case, nung barista, basta memorizing ko lang, no requisite, pero hindi ko lang ano ba yung CHAM Pertus na yan. Ano ba yung contingent fee na yan? Para mas maintindihan po natin kung ano yung prinsipyo ng contingent fee agreement, kung ano ba itong purchase contract na yan, uh, kailangan we should know the provision or rule under the CPR uh, about first question, can a lawyer borrow money from his client? First question muna natin pala yun, bago, bago natin ipasok yung dalawang prinsipyo na to. Can a lawyer 
borrow money from his client. Okay? So generally, sasagot natin hindi. Kasi uh, parang take advantage attorney pag ganyan. But is there an instance as provided under the CPR? Is there an instance wherein a lawyer may borrow money from his or her client? Yes. According to the CPR as a general rule, a lawyer is not allowed to borrow money from his client except except if the interest of the client is being protected by the nature of the case or by independent advice. So, pwede pa na umutang si client if the interest of the client is protected by the nature of the case. Ano ba yung nature of the case? Is it, for example, si attorney, client is a, is a bank. Pwede siya mga utang siya. Or by independent advice. Okay? So, that's borrowing. Si attorney ang nagbabarrow ng pera. Okay? Second paragraph tayo no, Can a lawyer lend money to his client? Diyan na po pwede pumasok itong Sampertus or contingent fee contract. Ano muna yung nasa provision ng CPR? Okay? A lawyer is not allowed to lend money to his client. Yun yung Champertus contract. We will discuss later. A lawyer is not allowed to lend money to his client except in the interest of justice to advance necessary expenses. Yun yung contingent. Bakit? Okay? Let's go first to the requisite. So, pasok na tayo sa contingent fee sa chapter 2. Okay? So, remember, pumapasok yung konsepto na to para hindi kayo malito. Doon si lawyer naglilend, nagpapahiram ng pera kay client. Okay? Contingent fee, first of all, this is valid. Okay? Chapter 2, we all know this is not allowed. Okay? Pero paano natin malalaman kung contingent fee yung tanong sa inyo sa bar which is valid or paano natin malalaman kung champertus siya void siya okay number one champertus muna tayo okay ano yung sabi dun sa CPR a lawyer is not allowed to lend money to his client except in the interest of justice to advance keyword necessary expenses so ang pinahiram ni attorney ay only necessary expenses necessary expenses Kasi allowed siya under the CPR. On the other hand, if it is a champertus contract, ano ang pinahiram ni attorney? All kinds of expenses. Kahit ano, kahit na pag-taxi, kahit na pang-hotel, niglayin. All kinds of expenses. Okay? Dito, necessary expenses lang. Ano, ano, ano ba mga necessary expenses? Kasi, bucket piece, Yun yung pinakawalang pambayad si client ng bucket fees, pinakutang muna. Okay. Number two, contingent fee ang pinag-uusapan dyan sa problem na yan. If dun sa kontrata ni attorneys, ni attorney and client sa legal services nila, if there is a stipulation that there is a reimbursement. Reimbursement. Words. Meron dapat stipulation sa contract of legal services na yung mga pinautang ni attorney na mga necessary expenses, it is subject to, to reimbursement. Okay? And number three, another, uh, number three, bakit siya tinalo na contingent? Kasi it is subject, there is a stipulation in the contract that the lawyer will be paid only if there is a favorable judgment. So, yun yung contingent, contingent uh, condition niya. Kailangan maipanalo muna ni lawyer yung kaso para siya mabayaran ng utang ni client. Okay? And again, third requisite is that there must be a stipulation in the contract that the lawyer will be paid if he or if the lawyer will have a favorable judgment, si lawyer and si client. Okay? Now, let's go now dito sa chapter 2. Kung dito sa contingent fee, may stipulation of reimbursement. Dito, no reimbursement. No reimbursement. Yung pinautang ni lawyer na all kinds of expenses, walang stipulation dyan na babayaran siya ni client. Okay? Number three, although this number three is in some cases of the Supreme Court na dinidisregard na lang, kasi yung third, usually yung third requisite ng Champertus contract is that the lawyer will be paid by a portion of the property under litigation. So, Again, yung number three na requisite ng, ng Champertus contract, the lawyer will be paid by a portion of the property under, under litigation. 
but in some cases nga uh, kahit na yung binayad kay attorney ay hindi part nung or hindi portion ng property under litigation na consider pa rin siyang chamber tools kasi all kinds of expenses ang pinautang and not subject to a stipulation now rationale eh, bakit allowed ang contingent fee agreement contingent fee uh, contract bakit hindi allowed ang chamber tools contract Okay. Now, first of all, ang contingent fee nga ay allowed dahil sabi nga sa CPR natin, a lawyer generally, a lawyer should not lend money to his client except in the interest of justice to advance necessary expenses provided by law. And also number two, sabi rin ni Supreme Court in, in several cases, bakit daw valid ang contingent fee? Kasi contingent fee agreement redounds to the benefit of a client who doesn't have a mean of paying a lawyer but has a meritorious case or cause of action. Again, valid ang contingent fee kasi nga it will redound to the benefit of a client who has no means of paying uh, attorney's fees but has a meritorious case or cause of action. Okay? Now, bakit daw bawal ang Champertus contract? Bawal ang Champertus contract kasi in effect, the lawyer is investing in a case whether or not manalo siya o hindi. Basta ang purpose niya is to profit thereafter. He is investing in that case. Now regardless kung manalo man siya o hindi. And with the purpose of he will profit thereafter. Kaya hindi pwede ang chapter 2. Kasi nga, lawyering is a noble profession. It is not a trade or a business. Okay? So, uh, with that, I hope uh, you uh, you learned something from uh, my lecture. Uh, thank you for watching and for staying until the end of my presentation. Please visit the VLC website at www.villasislawcenter.com to know more about of the virtual law companion. And of course, prepare for the bar examination at any time, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Together, we can. God bless. The law firm of Villasis & Partners, VP Law, is a law office engaged in the general practice of law. Its principal office is conveniently located at the heart of the University Belt at Villasis Law Center, VLC, Unit 911 CKKFI Building P. Paredes Street, Sampala, Manila. VP Law was organized in 2015 by attorney Christian G. Villasis and continues to expand to date. 
From the start, VP Law has maintained a varied and prestigious client base and continues to be recognized as one of the leading law firms in the country. VP Law has a diversified general law practice as the firm handles all aspects of corporate, commercial and business transactions, protection and enforcement of intellectual property rights and data privacy rights, collection, civil and criminal litigation, admiralty and maritime practice, labor management relations, election, administrative and local government cases, real estate transactions, land titles, deeds and conveyances, foreclosure of mortgages, writ of possession, replevin, bought laws, business organizations and corporate regulatory compliance and taxation, among others. In addition, the firm offers contract drafting, review, and negotiation, legal research and consultation, as well as other legal assistance appurtenant thereto. At present, the firm's increasing number of lawyers is capable of handling various legal matters and cases and is able and willing to cater to clients' concerns with utmost professionalism and zeal. Apart from experienced VP law lawyers, its legal team includes highly competent paralegals and professional legal staff who are constantly inclined to assist the lawyers, thereby ensuring efficient and cost-effective service to its clients. VP Law aims to provide its clients with quality legal representation anchored on the ethics of hard work, commitment and responsiveness to clients' needs. This vision has been the moving force in the firm's growth into a first-rate, full-service law firm.
We are VLC. We offer value, providing you with quality review programs and online seminars that bring out the best in you. At VLC, we listen. Adapting to the times, we brought our in-demand on-ground review lectures online with our virtual law companion. Subscribing to this online learning platform means you get 24-7 access to our updated video lectures and bar review notes from the best and most respected lecturers and professors. At VLC, we collaborate, working with the best technology providers through our learning management system to best prepare you for the first ever digitalized bar exams. We work hand-in-hand -hand with legal experts you can trust, providing top-notch services to those who need it the most through our free online legal consultations and free lecture series. Value.
Of appeals, the Supreme Court devised or laid down tests in determining whether a counterclaim is compulsory or permissive. There are four questions to be asked, my friends. The first question is you check, okay? Sabi ko compulsory or claim arises out or it is necessarily connected with transaction occurrence, which is the subject matter of the complaint. Pag sinabi mong compulsory counterclaim, kaibigan, it is, it is an offshoot of the complaint. There is a logical connection between the counterclaim and the subject matter of the complaint. Kaya sa barit sam, tinan nyo ang apat na test na ito. Number one, are the issues of fact or law raised? Next one is 
with respect to estate. Alright? Gifts. Alright? Bequest devices. If you try to analyze it, these are actually the transfer taxes being pertained to in the National Internal Revenue Code. They are the estate for inheritance or succession and then the donor's tax for gifts. Right? So one is uh, mortis causa, that's the estate tax, and the other one is inter vivos. The other one is inter vivos. Now, uh, incidentally, uh, I just got reminded that, uh, well, you learned in uh, the general principles of taxation that uh, the main purpose of taxation is actually to raise revenue. But in the case of donor stocks, it's not actually the main purpose, although it's still one of the purposes of donor stocks. But primarily, donor stocks is actually, all right, the and. Uh, What is a dispute? The dispute is a disagreement on a point of law or fact, a conflict of legal views or interests between two persons, natural or juridical. In the Republic Act 9285 or the ADR Act of 2004, it is defined as a process or procedure used to resolve a dispute or controversy other than by adjudication of a presiding judge of a court or an officer of a government agency in which a neutral third party participates to assist in the resolution of issues which includes arbitration, mediation, conciliation, early neutral evaluation, mini trial, or any combination thereof. So we take note of the meaning. It is a process or a procedure. Rule 30 is trial in civil cases, while Rule 119 is trial in criminal cases. Under Rule 119, trial in criminal cases, I give emphasis to the following issues. The first is the continuous trial, which I already partly discussed with you. Uh, just refer yourselves to the continuous trial rule in criminal cases, the latest on uh, the issue. Then the second issue that I would like to discuss in Rule 119 would be the mode of discovery, which uh, should be discussed in relation to Rule 23. Answer either way, class, and, and so long as you are able to present in your answer basic precepts, sound ones, and rational ones, then it should be your answer given full credit. It would all depend on, as I always announce in my class, and not, it would always depend on your English. All right, you say that the successful president can act on those bills. Why? Well, because the Constitution does not make any distinction as to the rule of presentment and the competence of either predecessor or successor president to approve or veto the same. The only uh, prescription in the Constitution is that if it were not acted within 30 days, then it shall be considered essentially as having lapsed into law. But you can answer that way, class, and that should be a correct answer. But then you can answer the other way. Again, sequential, you may skip, but make sure no, that you are still on that track. And uh, what best way for you to make sure that you are still on track is again to devote a page to a main question. 
make sure, make sure that you uh, you do this so that you wouldn't be you wouldn't be forced to resort not to to putting notes like how you do it in law school because in the bar examinations no more. Diba yung notes mo dun sa examiner, Mr. Bar Examiner, please check the last page of my book, uh, of my booklet because that's where I put my answer in this, to this question. That's not allowed anymore because that's an un- unnecessary marking, right? So, kung sa law school, nagagawa yung dati, puro anos, you try to direct your professor and when you to do Party Bress's case and real evidence consists of objects offered in court. Example, you may use a physical object to demonstrate its existence or identity. Like for example, the serial number on a computer found in a private residence could identify it as a government-owned property. Or for example, the gun that was used in case of murder. Now, the other type would be testimonial evidence. And what is testimonial evidence? You call a person to take the witness stand and his testimony is offered to prove, is being offered to prove uh, specific purposes. The third type will be your documentary evidence. It is formally offered by the proponent immediately before he rests his case. A document may be an object of evidence or a documentary evidence depending on the person. This is before the amendment. And for every allegation, it should be supported by evidence because evidence is the means sanctioned by the rules in a judicial proceeding to establish what? That equals to the truth. So if there is an allegation supported by evidence, then you're able to establish to the truth. But now it has been adjusted. Kind, kindly take note of that. Why? Because today, for purposes of filing a pleading, for purposes of initiating a complaint, and this would include all other pleadings, even responsive pleadings, what is now the requirement of Google under Rule 6? That together with a pleading initiatory pleading, which is made as an integral part thereof, would be what? Judicial agreements. LC. We offer value, providing you with quality review programs and online seminars that bring out the best in you. At VLC, we listen. Adapting to the times, we brought our in-demand on-ground review lectures online with our virtual law companion. Subscribing to this online learning platform means You get 24-7 access to our updated video lectures and bar review notes from the best and most respected lecturers and professors. At VLC, we collaborate, working with the best technology providers through our learning management system to best prepare you for the first ever digitalized bar exams. We work hand-in-hand with legal experts you can trust providing top-notch services to those who need it the most through our free online legal consultations and free lecture series. Value, listen, and collaborate. This is the VLC way, and we are VLC. VLC.